From Washington, this is VOA News. South Sudan peace talks getting ready to roll. Another delay in Musharraf's Pakistani court appearance. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Delegates for South Sudan's warring sides are gathered in Ethiopia for peace talks. It'll be a bid to end weeks of violence. It's left more than a thousand people dead. Representatives of President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riek Machar arrived in the capital Addis Ababa on Wednesday. Talks are not expected to begin until Thursday. There were renewed clashes between government troops and forces loyal to Machar in Bor, the capital of South Sudan's Jonglei state. President Kiir declared a state of emergency there, as well as the oil-producing Unity State. Three car bombs killed at least eight people outside a major hotel used by foreigners in Mogadishu, Somalia. Government security forces and African Union peacekeepers sealed off the streets around the Jazeera Hotel on Wednesday. Two bombs went off in quick succession near the hotel gate. The third blast came a bit later. There's been no claim of responsibility for the bombings. As violence goes on in the Central African Republic, conditions for aid organizations like Doctors Without Borders have become dangerous. Twice in the last week, hospitals and clinics had to be evacuated when our men entered the facilities. Peter Cox reports. Teams with Doctors Without Borders say the violence has been escalating despite the increased presence of French and African troops. Sylvain Grou, the head of mission for Doctors Without Borders in the Central African Republic, says medical staff had to temporarily evacuate their facilities on December 24th and 25th due to threats by armed men and close gunfire. Essentially, they've been uh, threatening medical personnel. They've been threatening the staff as well. So it's been very, very difficult to manage those uh, incidents. Doctors Without Borders is providing general medical care for thousands of people and says its teams have been treating up to 20 people a day who have been injured in the violence. Peter Cox for VOA News, Johannesburg. The Palestinian ambassador to the Czech Republic was killed in an explosion at his apartment in Prague. Authorities say the blast was most likely an accident. Palestinian officials say the explosion occurred Wednesday as Ambassador Jamal al Jamal was opening an old safe that had been brought into his quarters. Reports say the explosives may actually have been part of a security device attached to the safe. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited the city of Volgograd Wednesday. The set of this week's twin suicide bombings left 34 people dead. Mr. Putin laid flowers at the scene of one of the bombings. He also visited with survivors at a hospital in the city. Mr. Putin said there was no justification for the attack, and there's been no claim of responsibility for the bombings. Volgograd is now under heavy security, with authorities deploying more than 5,000 personnel in and around the city. Violence in Iraq reached its worst level in years in 2013, with one organization saying almost 9,500 people died in bombings and militant assaults across the country. The United Nations and the Britain-based NGO Iraq Body Count say the number of deaths last year actually surpassed levels of violence last seen in 2008. Pakistan's former military ruler Pervez Musharraf went on trial for treason Wednesday but defense lawyers told the court security threats prevented him from attending the proceedings. Ayaz Ghul has details. Security arrangements were tied for Parvez Musharraf's scheduled appearance before a three-member special court hearing the high treason case. But shortly before the legal proceedings were to open, 
Pakistani police reported a bomb along the road Mr. Musharraf's convoy was to take to the court, preventing him from leaving his residence. Defense lawyer Ahmed Raza Kasuri says the court accepted their arguments about security threats facing Mr. Musharraf. You can't arrange foolproof security and plug in all the gaps. If something goes wrong, the court will also be a target of that attack. So the court realized that King, I'm talking sense, and uh, they were not adamant that no proceeding can take place without him. The treason trial is unprecedented in Pakistan, where the military remains the country's most powerful institution. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad. Pope Francis called for greater tolerance and solidarity among humankind during his first New Year's Day blessing. The Pope spoke to tens of thousands of people gathered in St. Peter's Square on Wednesday. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. These and other stories at voanews.com.